Hello everyone, and welcome to the tutorial for replacing your seat fabric on the driver's side seat of your Hummer H3. This is not going to be a seat cover installation. This is not going to be a leather repair installation. This is going to be, we are going to be removing the broken fabric from the bottom of the driver's side seat, and we are going to be replacing it with entirely new seat fabric, making the seat look brand new. Now on my truck, as you will shortly see, uh, I have beige leather seats. You might have cloth, you might have some other color, but the concepts are exactly the same. So just follow along, and by the time this is over, you should have a pretty good understanding of how to replace these yourself in your truck as well. This is a complete replacement leather seat fabric for the bottom of the driver's seat. Uh, all you gotta do to look for them is go on eBay. I'll put some links in the description, but that's where this came from. It's from a company in Texas, and they have them pretty much all built and ready to go, and all you have to do is just buy them. So check the description for the links. I'll put links in the description of everywhere that you can go and buy these, including places like eBay where I got mine. So let's get started. So to start, have to remove these four bolts holding the seat to the frame of the truck. These are 18 millimeter uh, bolts and they just come right off. There are two right here and in the back. There are two in the back. And if you're wondering what that stain was, it was a very unfortunate oil spill that I just can't seem to get out. Almost all the time it's covered by the mats anyway, so I don't really care. Once you get these four bolts off, this entire seat assembly comes off. The motor for the power adjustment comes off with it. Everything comes off with it. It's all a self-contained unit. Just before you pull it out of the truck, lean it back, and you're going to have to unplug all of the uh, wiring harness and stuff that connects the seat and all of its power functions to the rest of the truck. And I will show that, but first I'm going to get all these bolts off and lean the seat back, and then we're going to look at the power connectors. Actually, even better, uh, what I did just now was I used the power adjustments on the seat to tilt it all the way forward and up, and that gave me pretty great access to all of the uh, plugs and wires that I have to pull out. It's just these two right here. And you might even find old debris from under your seat that may have been stuck here for years, like sunscreen for the summer, or a dog toy for my dog. And just clean those off, get these unplugged, and then continue taking the seat apart. And even with the seat all the way up, you still have plenty of access to the bolts that uh, are in the front of the seat. Okay, so now with all of the bolts out of the seat, in the front and in the back, this whole thing should be loose, which it is, and we can now pull it out of the truck. Just make sure when you do it that you don't snag on any of these wires, you don't have any debris underneath your seat still. So this here, your truck may or may not have this. This was aftermarket, although I know a lot of Hummers have these uh, aftermarket pieces now. Uh, this is just an interior LED strip. I can make it turn in a different color that I want, and I think it's nice uh, as I drive at night, the whole interior glows. So I had to take this off because this I had zip tied to the underside of the seat right here, and obviously that wouldn't be able to survive the seat getting pulled out. So anyway, now with everything taken apart, take your seat out of the truck and bring it to your garage or workbench or anywhere that you can work on it. So now I have my seat removed from my Hummer and put into uh, my garage on my workbench. And now we can start the process of changing out the bottom seat fabric. Now, if you look on the new one here, you'll see that it has all of these like tension tabs that are supposed to like hook into something underneath the seat to hold it in place. And if you look underneath the original seat, you'll find them in the exact same spots. So under here, this right here, my fingers just barely touching. That is the black version of this white tensioning strap. And if we look on the sides, we have some other ones over here. We have another big one in the back. Looks like we have some Velcro uh, that we will have to put in over here in the back. And uh, that is pretty much how we're gonna go about this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the seat on its side to see if we can unscrew any of these trim pieces, although I don't think we have to, because if I just pull on this, I can get in here and just pull 
flip it up without needing to remove this trim piece. Although, knowing GM, I'm sure this trim piece is held on by clips because the buttons are behind it like it's a bezel. And I think we might be able to just pull this off. We might have to take off this lever, but I don't think that should be a problem. And on this side, everything looks like it's easy to get to like immediately. Like these are being held on by these two clips we could probably just pull off. So I'm gonna go and uh, do this stuff and I'll bounce back when appropriate. It's just, it's hard for me to film it at the same time I'm pulling stuff off because um, I can't hold the camera and also do this stuff. So I just laid the seat down on its side and this bezel here is held on by this screw right here. It's being held on by this little, it looks like a body clip, but it's smaller that just pops right out. And it's being held on by this screw over here in the back. So pulling these things off, should be able to pull this. And I'm also going to, looks like there's a uh, Torx head in here that I'll be pulling the lever for the adjuster out. And that will allow me to get this entire bezel out of here. So I can get to the clips and stuff on the side of this thing. Okay, and now with all the screws taken apart, this thing just comes right off. Just to note, there is a bunch of clips here that are just pushed in. You're gonna have to give it some force when you pull it out. It looks like one clip goes here between the buttons, over here in front of the buttons. Um, and just generally, you just gotta give it some force when you pull it up, but it does come up. And if you wanted to, I guess, replace your buttons or anything, now's the time to do it. And anyway, now we have exposed this, um, like, retaining clip over here that looks like it mates into this thing. Just just goes into it like a track, and then it hangs onto it. So that's easy, this is free and loose now. Uh, I also did take off uh, the seat adjustment uh, lever, that was easy, that was just a star bit. I said it was a Torx, but it's actually a star bit, it just comes right off, like that. Um, so you can remove the leather from it as well. Um, I don't think we're going to need to take this whole seat back off. Because as I was looking at this, like, here's the rear, like, seat tension holder thing. That should just come right off with, like, a screwdriver and some leverage. And then everything just kind of slides right off and slides underneath. So I don't think we're going to have to take this back part of the seat off. But I'm certainly prepared to if I have to. But I don't think I'll have to. I certainly don't want to. So <laughs> we shall see, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. So I'm going to try and take this seat off and not like touch any of that over here. And I think I'll be okay. So, all right, I'm going to go start pulling these off uh, here and uh, get these clips off. I also think that underneath the middle of the seat, there might be like some retaining rings to like keep the leather itself on the surface from sliding. Uh, if there are, I'll cut back and I'll get to those. But anyway, I'm just gonna start pulling it off and I'll cut back uh, when I can. Okay, I have most of the uh, side attachments up and the leather is starting to fold up and off of the seat. So this one, like I said, was over this thing here. Oh, also wear gloves. You see, I cut myself on my finger. That sucks. The metal down here really doesn't look the cleanest. So just wear gloves. But anyway, this was connected over on top on this uh, piece of uh, support section here. All you have to do is just crush the seat forward and then this will have enough slack. You can get in there and like just pull it out. Same goes for the back. Just get your hand like this and crush the seat forward. And this section here will have enough where you could just pop it off like this. This was a little harder though, so I had to use a screwdriver sort of coming from the top as leverage to pull it out. Uh, but it does come out. You see where the screwdriver kind of put a little bend in it. Uh, now this is the one I'm throwing away. I don't care. Uh, and even probably on the new one, this isn't really anything. But I'm probably going to put the back side on first so I could stretch it by, you know, moving it in the front because the front one was a lot easier to stretch and to pull to get it off of the um, center support there. So as I was folding it off, I did start to notice underneath here, there are, let me see if I can find one. There's one. There are these metal clips that are holding the seat in place in between the foam. So this is easy. This just 
curtain. All you have to do is just get a pair of pliers, grab it with the pliers, and pull it and rip it, but so it turns within the foam so you can remove the seat leather. Now on the new seat too, you see this is this is the front of the seat, but upside down. There is this very strong bit of fabric here. This here is supposed to clip into the foam right here on these metal clips. So I'm gonna reuse these and do the exact same thing. And it looks like uh, with the strong fabric on the side, there might be a handful of metal clips as well that I will be getting to as well. And I'll just pull them all off and reuse them for this. So to do that, I'm gonna flip the seat now back on its top and I'm going to go and uh, do that activity. Okay, so here is the seat now right side up. Here are the clips on the inside or metal rings. Um, and here is what I'm doing to get them out. And I was successful with this one. So here is another one buried right here. I'll try and get it all on camera. What I'm doing is I'm taking a screwdriver and I'm jamming it in between. It's very soft metal and I'm separating it a bit. So now there's a gap. Let's see if I get my focus to work. There we go. So now you see there's a gap between both sides of the ring. It's very soft metal. So now, get my pliers. And with my pliers, so we can show this. With my pliers, I'm just going to turn them, turn the clip. I know the focus sucks, I'm sorry, but I, I'm turning it and I'm moving it with the pliers and I'm massaging the fabric out of this metal ring. Now, leave that metal ring alone. Leave all these metal rings alone. You want them here because when this new uh, seat fabric goes on, you're gonna wanna reattach them to this fabric on the bottom here so your new seat doesn't slide around all over the place when you are sitting in it. So that's pretty much it. I think there's, yeah, one more on this side, possibly two more on this side. Um, I might lean the seat top back. I have better accessibility. Um, and then it's just getting all these clips up. That's, that's it, it's just you gotta get them all up now. Okay, now all of the metal clips have been disconnected. It looks like this is the lower heated seat element fun. Uh, there are four metal retaining clips on each of the long sides and in the front there are three. Now I'm leaving them all in place because I'm going to be reusing them. Like I said, it's very important so the seat doesn't slide around on top when you're on it. What I'm going to do is when I lay the new seat fabric down, I'm just going to go right through the process of poking these through. Um, that little fabric uh, section for support here and I'll use my pliers to crimp them closed again and turn the seam uh, towards the bottom so it won't uh, reopen again or potentially might scratch my new seat fabric uh, and just do it the entire way around. Now this is uh, a tedious process uh, but it is easy and you can get it off and honestly I'm pretty surprised with how clean this seat is. I've seen videos from other cars. I've been around other cars when they got their seat fabrics replaced and the whole bottom of this just looked like a kaleidoscope. Uh, I mean, I've gone out of my way to not, you know, spill things on it or beat the crap out of my truck since I've had it. But on the whole, I'll just probably vacuum. I mean, yeah, there's a bit of discoloration here, but it's not like it's crazy. I mean, on the whole, this is pretty clean. So I'm just going to vacuum it out and let it ride and put the other seat cover back on. And uh, that should be good. So anyway, now the seat fabric is completely disconnected from the seat from the foam itself. Also be careful because the foam is also loose. Uh, it looks like this is also a pretty significant anchor to leaving the foam in place. You can see you can just pick it right up. So just be careful with it. Um, and it looks like the only thing stopping me from kind of pulling it out is it looks like there's something over here in the back that's resisting me. So I'm going to hold the seat now forward and investigate what that is and I'll cut back once I have that figured out as well. Okay, so when I was trying to pull the seat up 
from the side and the back. I got it pretty much loose here in the back. I'm just trying to pull it through. I noticed right here, it looks like there's the strap that goes underneath the foam that is attached to the old seat fabric. Now, this new one, which I'm using as my reference here, doesn't have a strap. Honestly, I don't think it even needs a strap. Uh, so I am inclined to cut the strap because I really don't want to figure out how to weasel it through like all of this and out. And I might have to facilitate this thing coming off. And I really don't want to take the back of the seat off. Like I really, really don't. So anyway, uh, I'm going to cut that strap and then pull the rest out. It is attached to this seat fabric anyway. Once this seat fabric gets removed, the strap gets removed with it. And this new one here does not have a strap, so it's not necessary. So I'm gonna go cut this out and then pull this fabric out and then we should be good to go. And that's it. That strap was the last thing holding this thing on. It is now off. The old seat fabric is now free and can be thrown right into the trash. So now with that done, now we can focus on putting this new seat fabric on our seat. You don't have to touch anything else here. Certainly don't touch uh, this heating seat element here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this new seat fabric. I'm going to lay it on top of the old seat. I'm going to pull the different sides and like clips through to where they have to go uh, on the seat. Uh, I'm probably going to attach the back clip first just so like I know the seat is in like the right spot for the fabric on top of it. So when I do put these clips in, it doesn't like go in the wrong spot and when I tighten it, it'll look weird. So I'll actually put this in first so I know I'm in the right spot and then I will do all of the metal rings here and then I will do the rest of these attachment points and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna cut back after I have this uh, laid on top and the back section is more or less secured. Okay, we have the new seat fabric draped over and I have begun the process of reattaching it to the seat. So that starts with taking this section here and feeding it through and underneath uh, the back of the seat. Uh, then you just need to keep pulling it until you have enough slack to close these uh, Velcro sections here. Uh, that's just easy. And then once you have enough slack, you can close it. It'll look pretty much good from the back here. Just make sure too that you get your hand up in here and you're not caught on anything. Nothing's sticking out, nothing's poking, uh, and everything is nice. And you close these with um, the Velcro. On the old one, these were actually like clips and I kind of prefer the Velcro better because it's easy and it's a lot more forgiving. Uh, and then you just kind of line everything up here. It's not that hard. That's pretty much how we begin this. Now I'm going to flip the seat over and I'm going to attach this section here to its anchor underneath uh, the seat. Okay, so now we can just attach this anchor here to this uh, piece of support here. And that's just as easy as folding it over and making sure that it's clipped in here. Now the seat should have, you know, pull some tension on it, which it absolutely will once you go to the front to attach this section here. You gotta fold all this over and connect this to here, uh, which is not going to be easy once it's all done. But anyway, now at least we know from the back that everything is where it's supposed to be. And we can now start putting on those metal rings. I'm gonna flip the seat back over and I'm gonna start putting on those metal rings uh, so everything is re-secured again. So on my new seat fabric, unlike my old seat fabric, this reinforcing fabric that the rings are supposed to grab doesn't actually have uh, any holes in it. Uh, that's probably so they could give you lots of flexibility with adjusting it, that's fine. What I'm gonna do is, for every time there is a metal ring, I'm going to line up this support thing, and I'm just gonna poke a hole through it with my X-Acto knife, and that should be more than enough to get everything done and sorted out. Critically important, when you go to poke your holes with whatever tool you wanna use to make them, do it on the other side of this reinforcing lip here. It looks like there's a rope or a cable in here. This is what the rings actually grab onto. Do not poke it through this thing here. 
poke it through the flat section behind it. And that way the rings will have a nice, strong, secure thing to grab onto when you're using the seat. And here is what I am doing uh, with, the, with these metal rings that has been working for me. I have three already on this side put in. And next I'm gonna do the, the other side here and then the front. So what I'm doing is, like I said, I'm taking my X-Acto blade and I'm cutting a hole like right above where the ring is supposed to go through. Then I have my two pliers here, I have my needle nose. I'm forcing this down with my one hand and then I'm twisting this clip like this like twisting it like that. So this section here pokes through the hole and comes through. Then I'm taking my channel locks and I'm smooshing the metal rings back into closed shapes so that they can't come off. And that's pretty much it. That is it. So the word is tedious. It's not hard, but it's tedious. You gotta have a lot of patience so you can do this right and make sure that the seat, you know, holds you correctly, it doesn't slide around, and that it looks good. So I'll cut back after I have all these metal rings in. And now all of the metal rings are in. You see that it's holding on to the seat pretty good. They're all right there. Actually, this little divot here on the top and on the sides is the um reinforcement fabric that goes into the ring so you can actually use this as another little tool to help you line up the uh, seat fabric on top of the foam and it makes it really easy so anyway now that it's done uh, now is more or less the easy part is I'm going to first uh, get this connected underneath here to where it's supposed to go and then I will take care of the sides and then put all the uh, plastic trim pieces back on and everything this isn't back on it's just loose so i could like adjust the seat you'll find too that as you go and do this it helps if uh, the seat back is loose so you can rock it back and forth to get this uh, seat fabric where it needs to go uh, but anyway i'm going to put this back on and um start doing the sides with this bottom piece on and attached it wasn't terribly hard, but you do have to give it a considerably more amount of force to like, you know, crush the uh, seat down like this. So it has enough slack to plug into its little mounting point here. Nice and easy. And now this seat is basically looking done, but it isn't. There's a few more things that we have to do first. The first thing on this side, this holder here is meant to go upside down and plug into these two holes here. There's one by my thumb and there's one over here. These are held on by really awful uh, retaining clips that you're probably already familiar with as you've gotten them off to get to this part in the video. Basically, all we're going to do to reattach these is we're going to flip this upside down like this. We're going to line it up with the holes in the seat. We're going to drill through um, with the same diameter as the hole behind it. And that way we can just push in the clips and hold in the seat like this. And everything will be perfect on that side. On this side, there are two things we have to do. The first thing is this is the uh, seat adjustment lever. Here's the lever right here. It plugs in right over here to that thing. Uh, the leather needs to stretch over it. So same as the other side, but with the leather, we're going to use our um, X-Acto knife to just make a little slit to kind of feed that over it. If you're worried about doing that, you don't have to. You can just kind of push it behind like that. But for me, my old seat cover did have a hole poking through it um, where that happened for the seat lever. So I might do the same thing um, and make it look about the same. Or we could just fold it in the back like that. But I worry it's going to rub and, you know, make it look like shit. Uh, then, lastly, there is this uh, piece here. Now this is kind of a weird looking clip here. It looks like that the clip is here, but it's not. And there's like a clip right here on the um, heat uh, and power control functions for the seat. This is a little clip thing right here. How this works is, it's a little uh, hard to get it by just looking at it, but you flip it upside down like this. This section here bites into this lip here and it goes in and it's not a very tough fit, but then the plastic bezel that goes on top of this holds it in place and that's how that works. And uh, that's pretty much it. So anyway, I'm gonna go um, start doing these things, 
And uh, I'll cut back after I have this section here connected. And now these two clips are back in. Tap them in with a hammer a bit and get them in. It's okay if it's not like perfect, it's upholstery, it's very forgiving. And now this side is completely finished. So now we're gonna turn our attention to over here, take care of the uh, seat lever. And then we're going to take care of this section here and the final clip. And then we're going to put the plastic back on and everything is going to be perfect. Okay, so I poked a hole for the seat lever to go through. So that also helps anchor down uh, the seat a little more. And then also I have this pushed in. It's loose. It will pop out. But now we can get to the point where we can put the seat bezel back on and start screwing everything together. And this will be finished. That is it. It, the seat is back together. It is perfect. I love it. It looks brand new. It just, it makes the seat look like so much better. I might clean up up here. Just, you know, there's like some dirt and stuff for all the years that it's been in the truck, but the leather itself is fine. This is amazing and perfect. And I might just clean this up to match the new freshness of this bottom seat. But I basically have myself a brand new seat for the driver's side for the Hummer H3, and I am just so freaking happy about it. So now I'm gonna go put it back in the truck. Uh, that's just as easy as putting those four bolts back on and the plugs for the various, like, you know, controls, heat, and whatever inside of the seat. And that is pretty much it. I'm not gonna bother to show that because it's just four bolts. But anyway, good luck. I hope you have found this both helpful and informative, and you too, can get rid of your old seat fabric and replace it with brand new fabric and make the inside of your truck look brand new. Have a great day.